Hey everybody, I'm Erica Carlson with Bricks Real Estate. I'm a local real estate agent serving the West Metro in particular, but Hennepin, Wright County. Happy to be of help for you um, if you need any sort of real estate advice or assistance. Today I have Molly Zimmerman from Bell Mortgage Bank here to join us to talk about common mortgage mistakes kind of before and during the transaction. And once um, I am done with that short interview, I will have market update information for you. And I think you're going to find this information particularly helpful if you're looking to buy a home in 2024. But also, if you just own a house and you're curious about how things are going in the market, you don't have to necessarily think about selling to find this information helpful. Um, so I'm going to bring Molly in at this moment to talk to us about these common mistakes. So hopefully you will avoid them in the near future. What are some of the most common um, things you've seen in terms of people maybe messing up their ability to purchase a house mid-transaction or maybe like a unique, you know, if you're not... If you don't have anything for that first one, maybe a unique experience you're thinking about. Uh, sorry for putting you on the spot like this. Oh, no, that's okay. I mean, I feel like the biggest things are um, it can be it can be a hurdle for a lender if you change your jobs. Um, you know, we've had situations where people have done that and not shared the fact that they've changed jobs, and it yeah. it does create a problem <laughs> because we do verify that employment again prior to closing. So. Um, changing jobs is a big one. You've got to communicate that with your lender if you're going to do something like that. I do have a little <laughs> offshoot of a story on that one. And I, of course, I won't name names and I don't mean to be disrespectful. It's not uncommon for people to lose their jobs. They don't need to have shame in that. And of course, we should probably differentiate quitting a job is a different mm -hmm. thing than losing your job. And I've, 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 this is a common one for me where I see people either right before I had one where we just were about to write the offer. Actually, I did submit the offer and then I called and I said, I'm, I'm sorry, we can't move forward with our offer. I mean, it was just the weirdest timing. It actually happened this year. Um, but to your point, the other person I'm thinking of that lost their job recently, and again, we felt so bad for him and the situation that was evolved because we had picked the house, we were under contract on the house, but he didn't want to tell us. And I think what people have to keep in mind is that there's so much verification in 2023 as we're going into 2024. There is no hiding behind the fact that something happened. It would just be better for you to pick up the phone and say, no, I'm not comfortable, but I lost my job yesterday. And it, it, you don't even want to buy the house. Like, honestly, I think people forget that I know there's that shame of losing your job, but there's also, do you want to move forward with a purchase you can't afford? we don't want to hear that in six months you've defaulted on your mortgage because we bought you too much house for this moment in your life. Um, and I know it's hard for people to see that as a positive in that moment, but it probably was that it all yeah. worked out that way. I would agree. I mean, I've had, I've had that happen to buyers in the past. And I think the interesting thing is everything kind of happens for a reason because you find that when they're in that situation or when they're ready to buy again, it's almost like, oh gosh, we love this house more than the one we almost bought. Like mm -hmm. you just kind of have to keep, keep your lender, keep your agent um, up to speed on what's going on. Yeah. Um, another thing that can throw a wrench in, in our side of things is if you deposit a lot of money into your bank account yes. or you move money around a lot. I mean, I've seen buyers with 10 yes. different bank accounts and money's going everywhere. And believe it or not, like we might have to go to every single one of those accounts and, and source all of these movements of funds. So to yeah. make your lives easier too, just try not to do things like that or talk to your lender first before you start moving money and depositing money. So we can like help the process be easier and smoother for you. As you know, I just came out of closing yeah. this morning and that was, I asked them what could be, have been smoother or what you know, what could have you known that could have made this go better? And they didn't realize the, every time they were transferring money that the, for no how matter how insignificant the amount was, there was this paper trail that just, you know, they never told me, but privately they were, you know, frustrated because they didn't realize mm -hmm. that everything is being followed. And it, correct me if I'm wrong, Molly, but doesn't that happen before people find a house? Like, is it like a two month window or is it longer? Yeah, we, we have to have um, financials within so many days of closing. However, a lot of times for our pre-approval, we might have to add to that for your actual loan approval. Um, so I just, if I notice people transferring money a lot at that pre-stage, I just advise to not do that um, right. because it will just make, make things easier. Cause maybe then 
by the time you get to closing, we have two new, you know, two new months of statements and none of those tr uh, transfers are happening anymore. And it's just easier for everyone. Um, yeah, that, that can be a big one. I think what people yeah. don't understand too, is like getting your documents to your lender ASAP is so important because for us, we hate to ask for more information. I don't want to ask for something I don't need for a file, but what we need will flow based off of what we see. So if you're bringing something into the mix and suddenly it's like, oh, shoot, now we have to source this or now we have to ask about this. Right. It's better to do that sooner than later. Yeah, I think some people get so frustrated with this and it's like nobody's trying to make it harder. Nobody wants this either. Like it's it's a mutual thing, but yeah, to try to simplify your financial life. Um, and so I guess I'll piggyback off of this. I haven't had anybody do this yet. But I did recently hear a furniture store stops people from buying furniture if they're talking about, I'm buying a new house and I'm buying this living room set. And they'll say, pause. Right. I'm actually not going to sell it to you, which I was like, yeah. just shocked that anybody actually says that. And, and they said, well, of course we do. Of course we stop people because if they buy the furniture, they can't buy the house or they might not be able to buy the house. So we would yeah. rather tell them. Uh, no furniture or let's just pot let's let's buy this later and I thought that was really cool I didn't realize furniture stores would care but th they do have like an investment because if you don't buy the house you don't buy the furniture so that was correct kind of I've, I've heard I have I've had buyers tell me that too they're like we went to the furniture store and they said you got to talk to your lender first and I was like oh. thank you um <laughs> because believe it or not I mean there have been situations where people have lost the house because they bought too much furniture um Absolutely. not fun not well, fun for well, anyone I don't think I don't know if you're a TikTok girl um I'm a, like I'm a heavy TikTok user so there's a there was a pretty viral video I don't know if you saw it or not Molly but there was a girl crying and I'm not here to make fun of her we're just she was using it as an opportunity to like like a loan officer she was like trying to communicate to the world she went, I think, to a Home Depot and she, the lady said, you know, do you want a credit card? And she just like wasn't thinking at all. And she said she said she actually like felt bad for the salesperson, which is really unfortunate because she was buying six dollars worth of items, took out the credit card and then got a call that she wasn't getting the house. And, uh, you know, of course, she's just bawling. Um, and, you know, to us in the industry, that's not surprising, I think. What's hard to convey to people, and, and, and this is out of respect and love that like I'm sharing this next part, some of us are teetering on the edge of qualifying for a loan. And then we do something like a $6 purchase, which should have been benign, which should have been uninteresting. Um, it's not about the $6. I want to make sure people understand that from our conversation. The problem was this woman was probably, I'm guessing, was teetering on the edge of just qualifying at all. And that one more line of credit, you know, mm -hmm. whether it was her credit score, I don't know, Molly, you, you helped me out with right. that, but I mean, and it is crazy little changes to a buyer, a borrower's file can yeah. go from an approval to a denial, just, you know, just like that, unfortunately. Um, uh, but to kind of like work with a lender who knows what they're doing, because I mean, I've had some situations where it's like, oh, you know, we get into a little bit of a bind, but if you're working with somebody who's willing to take the time and maybe think about like, how can we maybe restructure this and still yeah. make it work? Um, I'd say right. you, you still might be okay, but it's just try to keep everything as clean as you possibly can until you actually close on that property. Yeah. And I think what I don't want people to take away from our conversation is that they can't buy groceries or they can't right. live their life. Though I think there's times of years, like I'm thinking right now, it's Christmas holiday time. Mm -hmm. People want to buy presents. But if you're also trying to buy a house, you might want to pick up the phone and call your loan officer and say, you know, I was going to spend a hundred on this and 200 on this. And, you know, mm -hmm. can I actually do that? Or am I going to mess up my ability to buy a house? But you, you shouldn't have to call about like getting gas in your car. Correct. Or yeah. Groceries. It's, it's not, that's not the kind of stuff you guys are. Right. It's more the big purchases, adding debt, um, you know, purchasing a new car or leasing a new vehicle, all of those things. I mean, we've seen people spend money they had saved up for a purchase and that's a big problem. So um, just the more you can communicate, the better things will be. And I, and I feel like, so I have two little stories and then, and then I, these are personal. I have 
was showing somebody houses for a long time and and I met them at one and I think it was like our 30th house we kept losing house after this was during the pandemic when everything was so hard to get under contract and we show up and he says something of the nature of so I bought a car and, and I don't mean this literally but it basically shook his hand and said it was nice knowing you but this isn't this is done and I that sounds so catty and like I'm I, I don't mean to be that extreme but that is what happened because again this person was teetering on the edge of like the ability to buy the house and then of course he said well I, I need a car I need to get to work of course you do but not all of us can do all the things at the same time and so if a car emergency comes up and you wanted to buy a house unfortunately you did make the decision you bought the car so there just isn't enough left over for everything and anything. And then my uh, last one that I think really surprises people is I, and I've only run into this once. I don't know if you've seen this or not, Molly, but I had somebody consolidate student loan debt the week of closing. And um, I think if you just take the concept of student loan debt and consolidating, it's not bad. We're not, we're not judging, again, we're not judging the action. We're not saying buying furniture is bad or student loan debt consolidation is bad. It's the timing Mm -hmm. that is hurting the situation. And so in that, um, we didn't talk about earnest money. And I, I think we'll save that for another day, just because I know we've, we've been talking for a while. But at that point, that is when a seller can keep your earnest money. If you mm -hmm. messed up the transaction, you bought the furniture, you deliberately quit the job. I'm trying to think of other examples um, that we haven't talked about. You consolidated your student loan debt before calling your loan officer. Uh, we were at liberty to keep the earnest money and and then there could have been further financial damages. Um, now that one did end up closing. We did solve the problem. Everybody solved the problem. It was scrambling. It was hard. It was stressful. Um, and it, it wasn't made better because this particular borrower had been very demanding on the seller in terms of repair items to turn around and do that. The seller was not compassionate that they had consolidated their student loan debt. They again, they were probably being very ignorant and innocent and thought it was a good thing. But in the end, it backfired on them because then the seller was angry and said, not only did I do all these repairs for you, you're not actually able to get a loan. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> kind of weak. Yeah, communicate. communicate. <laughs> just, just be upfront with us because if you think you can hide something, chances are you can't. Um, yeah. It's going to come up. We're going to find it. And you're better off just being upfront right from the very beginning. So it kind of feels like when in doubt, talk to your loan officer. Um, there is some things to be cognizant of before somebody goes under contract on a house that would be helpful to know and be aware of. And then, of course, once you're under contract, you need to raise your awareness um, is mm -hmm. what I'm hearing of like your spending habits, transferring money. Um, yeah, making big purchases, right? I would agree. Yep. Anything else you can think of? I think those are the big ones. I think, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we covered a lot of ground. I mean, I'm sure we could think of other things too. And, and, right. and they probably already know some of those things too. So well, I hope you have a happy holidays. Thank you for joining me. If you click the link, whether you're finding me on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, it will take you to Molly's information. If you want to get a hold of her or myself, uh, there's a couple of other links in there you might find helpful. Uh, but let's start with general Twin Cities market data, and then we will jump into Wright County. I'm going to just try to brush on this real quick because the changes week over week haven't been um, immense or significant. We've just been very flat. Uh, but our brokerage puts out these graphics, which I think you might appreciate. You can see on our market meter that we are on more of a buyer side of things. At this point, the sellers are... Um, not not in charge at this very moment in time. I still hear people saying it's a seller's market. Not really. I mean, it's not that houses don't go into multiple offers. They do. Houses priced right, very attractive houses that appeal to a lot of people for sure. Still have that capability. It doesn't mean that doesn't happen. And it doesn't mean the buyers get everything and anything. Uh, but what it does mean is that there's maybe some more negotiation on price. Maybe they're getting some concessions, some help with closing costs, maybe some repairs fixed. Things like that. That's what a buyer's market honestly uh, really means. You can see uh, below 36 days is kind of the, the general average median days on market. We're going to dig into that more on Wright County. Uh, inventory over last year is significantly lower. You're going to see in just a moment Wright County has dropped back even further. Absolutely no surprise. It is late December. 
we we just do not expect a lot of inventory options. And then what's interesting, and of course you've probably heard the news say this to some capacity is that interest rates have come back down. So now we are getting below the sevens. Of course, that's a base rate. There's no discount points. I'm not representing any particular lender when I share that information with you. Uh, that's assuming it's a 30 year fixed, of course, but there's a lot of variables and you're gonna wanna dig into that with your preferred lender. Uh, digging into December 20th date, the thing that jumps out at to me the most is just looking how that inventory has backed down from the 500s to the high 400s. When we look at the houses without any sort of contingencies, meaning you can buy them without that component to it. Uh, now it drops all the way to 437 and you look at 454 last week and 474, it's just been this like decline. I'm not surprised by it. I hope you're not surprised by it. The holidays make people pull back on their moving goals. Now, again, I look outside this week. There is absolutely no snow on the ground out there. I have a window to the right of me here. These are my uh, curtains. Um, I mean, it's very dry. It's very unusual for December. I think a lot of us are enjoying it. People are still taking walks and biking. I'm seeing things like that because it's it's not that bad out there, which means people are still house shopping. So if you do have a house to sell, you know, I think it's all circumstantial, but uh, you don't have to be necessarily desperate. And plus you have very low competition in terms of inventory. So I know like we we give you these general rules to follow, but you have to take a big step back and figure out what's gonna work for your situation, your family, et cetera. Uh, pendings, you know, 150, they were 144 last week. Closings, um, really super stagnant. It's just kind of, we're at like 160. And I know these numbers don't mean a lot, but it's looking over these trends over time. We are slow, slow, slow. That's what I'm telling you. Things aren't moving quickly. So I like this data better. This is the showings per week per listing in the 250 to 500K range. If we drop that price down or up, our numbers would change. So in Hennepin County, it was uh, very average for people to have 2.4 showings per week per listing. So what that converts to is two showings per week per listing. So if your house is on the market and you're thinking, why don't I have three, 10 showings? It's been a weekend, nobody's here. Th th you're in the average, this is normal. And um, you don't necessarily wanna monkey around with your price too much because again, there's just not that many people out there shopping. It doesn't mean you're necessarily priced wrong could be. I guess that, you know, there's too many variables and I can't consider all that in this video. Uh, when you compare that to Hennepin County, they have come off of three showings a week to 2.8. Again, nobody's a decimal. There is no 2.8 human showings, but um, so, you know, 2.8 to three is not much of a change. So again, Hennepin County always moves a little bit faster, a few more buyers in that area. Absolutely no surprise. So they're both kind of just staying steady, you know, obviously people are finding houses, but new people come on to the market that weren't there yesterday. And then uh, days on market, you know, let's see, let's go back to that. They said 36.6 was median. And I, when they say Twin Cities, I, I don't even know exactly what area that's defining. I mean, that, that could be like seven, 13 counties. I don't know. So in Wright County, right now with the pending properties only, I, that's all I consider is pendings. I'm not looking at the ones that aren't selling. Um, or the ones that closed yesterday. I'm just looking at the pending. So 50 days is average at this moment in time and 30 is the median. So of course those numbers are going up because as we went into fall and winter, uh, things slowed down. And so that is predictive that that number would go up and then we're gonna come over the holidays and it's gonna reverse the other way. Um, if you have any real estate questions, um, if it's on the loan side, Molly would love to talk to you. I'd love to hear from you. If you want a free market report, that's always a possibility. You just go to my link and you can get them from there. Delano, Buffalo, St. Michael, Rockford are already set up to give you like just the city versions, but I can set up a custom one for you. Um, if there's anything I can do, you can reach me at iheartmplsminneapolishomes.com. Thank you so much for making it to the end. Happy holidays, and I will try to be back next week, but probably on Tuesday uh, due to a doctor's appointment on that Wednesday, uh, but it's a little up in the air. I might just take the week off as well, so reach out if there's anything I can do. Thanks again. Bye-bye.